Hello aviators, welcome to my instrument rating video series. I'm Ty Jones, your error nerd, bringing you honest experience, reviews, training tips that will help you aviate, navigate, and communicate. Now, if you're new here, the purpose of this video series is to bring you free, in-depth instrument ground school training for you instrument pilots. This is the same exact training and instructions that I normally give to my students. And if you're one of my students that are watching, yes, you can use this as a review because this is literally the same exact instructions that I give in the same exact way. Um, and it has been proven to work. So without further ado, let's jump right into the training. Hello instrument pilots, you've made it to episode four or session four or ground school lesson number four or whatever you want to say. This is the fourth video in the instrument ground school series. So congratulations if you have uh, missed episodes one or two or three or all three of them. Uh, go ahead and hit the links above. I'll put a links in all three of them and I'll also put links in the, in the description below um, so you can actually make sense of what's going on here. If you have not read, if you have not watched those other videos, no sweat. This will still make sense even if you haven't watched those videos before. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the privileges and limitations of instrument pilot. When you, when you look at, at, at part 61, it literally tells you the privileges and limitations of a private pilot. It tells you the limitations and privileges of a of a instructor, of a commercial pilot. It doesn't say anything about instrument pilot. In fact, if you go in order, it'll probably go from private pilot and then it'll skip instrument and then it'll go right to commercial and then right to flight instructor. It's like, okay, what, what the heck happened to uh, uh, instrument? If you actually go back behind uh, private level and I believe actually recreational too, you flip back, back, and then you'll find uh, 6165. That is the instrument rating um, and it's literally an, an addition. It's just, it's just a rating. It's not a, uh, it's not a license, it's a rating. I'm gonna start with 6165. This is the, you need to be really, really familiar with this. This is what the examiner is gonna be expecting you to have done completed before the check ride is completed. Um, speaking of privileges and limitations, they are kind of hidden inside of commercial, a little bit of private, a little bit of here, a little bit of there. Um, speaking of, so one of the things that is kind of hidden in there is 61133B, where it talks about the privileges in commercial pilot. It'll say, yay, hey, congratulations, high five, you made your commercial pilot, but don't you dare try to have, try to carry passengers for hire more than 50 miles, or don't you dare try to bring passengers or carry passengers at night without your instrument rating. What the heck? Why can why can it just be that in why can that just be in 6165? I don't know. Maybe call, talk to the FAA, maybe they'll fix it or whatever. But it's been like that for a long time. So anyway, um, 6165 is where you can find the limit or the, what you need to get your instrument rating. One, 61133 Bravo is one of the things that it'll it'll tell you about the whole 50, mile, 50 nautical mile thing and the in the carrying passengers or carrying passengers at night. So what else can you do with a instrument rating? Well, obviously you can fly instrument approaches. You can fly in the clouds. You can fly in alpha airspace. Yay. You can file IFR plans. Now, if you shoot an approach, obviously the tower, the, the tower or approach is going to expect you to be an instrument rated. If you shoot an approach and you're not instrument rated and something happens and then they find out in the, in the investigation that you try to shoot an approach that you're not instrument rated, ooh, I would not want to be you. So make sure before you shoot these approaches, make sure you are instrument rated or you are with a with a CFII. That's literally the limitations and and uh, and privileges of IFR. Now one advantage that's not really written anywhere is you will have so much more confidence in talking to approach in tower or whoever uh, when you're if you let's say you have a private license and you're you got your license on a non-towered airport like this guy I got my private pilot license in 3AU, which I'm pretty sure a lot of you have uh, seen the video. If not, I'll go ahead and put it in the, in the description above or the link above so you can see that. Um, it wasn't towered. So when I came to Daytona Beach and I was shooting my first approach, oh my goodness, I, it, I was overwhelmed with talking to 
my instructor while I had ATIS in one ear, while I had the approach in the other ear, and I had this briefly approach, and I had, it's multitasking like crazy. You will be overwhelmed when you first start this rating. However, it's just like going to the gym. You go to the treadmill and you want to run 5K at speed nine. Are you really going to make the 5K at speed number nine? Of course not the very first time. However, you build up to it and you build up to it and you build up to it and eventually, you're gonna be able to be able to run the 5k at speed nine on the treadmill or or run the 5k at uh, however many many minutes that 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 it, that it takes or whatever you want your goal to be don't let the very first lessons of instrument uh whether if it's in the simulator or whether if you're flying in the air overwhelm you it's going to happen expect that to happen um it's gonna happen it really what i do in my students is i actually have them do a holding pattern while they're doing a holding pattern i have them read me a a a part in the far aim or i have them read something while they're maintaining altitude while they're um, checking their airspeed while they're listening to approach while they're making making sure that they make their turn um, uh, uh, on the on the right time making sure they do that they do their entry patterns in the correct way it's all about aviate, navigate, and communicating, right? It's aviate first. Fly that airplane first. That's my, my ultimate number one rule. Fly the airplane first. Don't care about anything else. You're flying the airplane first. Then you navigate. Now, okay, where, what's the altitude I need to be at? What's the heading I need to be at? Where, how, what's the entry I need to go at? Okay, cool. And then lastly, communicate. Then you can talk to the tower. Don't drop the airplane to fly the microphone, okay? Fly the airplane first. Aviate, navigate, and communicate. So that's literally it on privileges. There's not really much to discuss about the, uh, the, the privileges and limitations of instrument pilot other than the other advantages that are, aren't really written. So I'm going to leave with this one more thing. We go in your far aim. This is the far aim, the ASA, this is the ASA. Yeah, the ASA version. Now there is another version out there. I recommend this is the one that you use because in this, in this version of far aim, if you open it up, you have a suggested study list. And I know I've mentioned this in my other previous videos many times, which is, um, um, uh, check ride on a, on a silver platter handed to you on a silver platter or whatnot. I'll put it, I'll put another link in the description below if you want to, if you guys want to check that one out. But this right here is instrument. Let me go ahead and zoom in here. Uh, if I can, if I can do this cool. So instrument, so here's your instrument CFII. Let me go ahead and so in the very beginning, you'll see your suggested study list. There's your suggested study list, sport pilot, private pilot, all that good stuff. Now you'll find a section for instrument pilot. Every single thing that's that's uh, on here, this is what the examiner could be asking you about or what the FAA expects you to know on this suggested study list. Um, what I'm gonna do is I can, I don't know if I can take a picture of this and put it in the comments below. I don't know if you can do that in YouTube, um, but if you want a, a picture of this, just put it in the comments below and I can, I don't know, I'll, I'll figure it out. But anyway, another thing that I have uh, done, what I recommend is when you go over 61.3, then write a little description in there to say what 61.3 means to you as you're, as, as you're studying for your instrument. Then 6151, 6157, 6165, hey, 6165, bam, right there. All the stuff you need to study, the FAA is literally telling you uh, what to study, all of this. So again, when you are finished studying all of this, and this gives you a nice structuralized uh, a method to study, instead of studying, instead of, okay, cool, I gotta study weather. Now I gotta study uh, airspaces. Now I gotta study VORs. Now I gotta study what uh, performance-based navigation is. Now I gotta study what WAS is. Now I gotta, study, you're all over the place, right? However, if you are going on this nice structuralized uh, way of studying the, the structuralized method. Sorry about the whole thing. I'm trying to look at like three different things at one time here. Anyway, um, this is a really good way, a method to study. Now notice there's a lot of things here in the, in the aim here. Now what I recommended, so you should write something down here, write something down, write something down. So when you're done, it should l literally look, and this is my personal, um, far aim. So this is what mine looked like when I was studying for a flight instructor. As you can see, it, the whole thing is just written down all kinds of stuff uh, in there. So uh, that's what I recommend, uh, whether if you're studying for a commercial or instrument or private or what or whatnot. 
Uh, this is what I recommend, but use this as a guideline, not just the, uh, not just the, uh, the ACS, but also the suggested, uh, the, the suggested study list as well. Okay, so instrument pilots, thank you again for sticking with me to the end. This is going to wrap up the um, the ground school session number four uh, for instrument pilot privileges and limitations. The next episode five is we're going to be talking about low IFR charts. So stick around for that. If you have any questions based off of, the, of what we discussed earlier, just put them in the comments below and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. In the meantime, I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, keep flying, keep learning, and always have fun. I'll see you guys in the next episode.